Katie, it's Saturday! So I'm in Boston, as you can see by my new lovely room behind me, which I'll show you later. Um, which is fun, but I've met some very much other attractive people that I'd like to introduce you to now. This is my roommate, Catherine! I almost got hit by an ice cream truck. Yes. So I finally got to see Harry Potter today because we couldn't go to midnight because we have a curfew at Emerson because it's like you're doing theater 12 hours a day. You should probably get some sleep. So I was like, oh no. So we went to go see it today and it was really wonderful. This is Deirdre. We held hands through the entire movie. Like really tightly. And cried. This is Barkley as a general. It was great because we went to like 2.30 on a Saturday and it was still packed. So Catherine went as Lord Voldemort and I was Harry Potter, obviously because I look a lot like him. It makes me really sad that Harry Potter is over, but at least Pottermore is happening like you said. But somebody in our comments was confused about that, so go to Pottermore.com because I'm not taking the time to explain it, unless you really want me to. But I just want this video, so you can deal with that. Let me show you our room! This is our chandelier. Isn't it pretty? It's just a wall decal. It's not real. This is my bed with Paris behind me because it's beautiful. I know you thought that Boston was not near Paris, but it is geographically. It's Hi. correct. This is Deirdre on my back. This is an owl! Here are some more owls! That's pretty much it. It's, it's a small room, but we love it. Meow. As Harry Potter and I... Oh... As I was sitting next to Lord Voldemort in the movie theater today as Harry Potter, which is super awkward, uh, Lord Voldemort was kind of angry with the movie, um, and Catherine, who has portrayed this beautiful character, would like to share that those views with us today. So, Harry Potter. Now, if you look at every single movie, it's Harry Potter and the blank. Harry Potter and the blank. It's not all about Harry Potter, as much as he thinks it is, because he thinks he's the chosen one. Okay. But there's always another story. And you know whose story that is? Yes, my friends. I'm talking about the guy who doesn't have a nose, Lord Voldemort. Now, have you ever realized that life could be so hard if you don't have a nose and if you look like you're also a snake at the same time of being a person and you can't afford to get a manicure? Yes, my friends, it is really, really difficult. And like, we all don't like things. Like, maybe you don't like carrots. Maybe you don't like rabbits. Well, he doesn't like muggles. So let the guy not like muggles. And that's really not his fault. So maybe his rage got out of control. Well, maybe someone should have checked him into therapy. And this guy, like Harry Potter, tries to take away his awesomeness by being more awesome. Well, you know what, Harry? You just have glasses and a lightning bolt scar. Psh, I have scars. He also deals with the fact that he doesn't have a nose. So every day that you're sitting there smelling that pizza pizza, smelling that orange juice, smelling your foot, <laughs> remember that... Lord Voldemort cannot, and <laughs> his life was just poorly represented through his death when he vanished into a bunch of shredded pieces of paper. Spoiler. And that's just not cool. No one deserves that. Even Baldy. He's a big, bad, dark lord who is misunderstood. So I just think that Harry Potter, or should I say Lord Voldemort, is a coming-of-age story about a man who could have been good, but nobody cared enough to steer him in the right direction. I think we can all pretty much agree on that. Also, 10 points for Gryffindor for most successful puberty goes to Neville Longbottom, let's be honest. Unfortunate name, very fortunate looks. That is pretty much it. I will see you on Thursday now, which is fun. Uh, until then, don't forget to be awesome.